Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Mina. Uh, this is part two of the knitted vest tutorial. Um, so if you haven't seen part one, I'll, I'll chuck it up there for you. Uh, so you can go check that out first. Um, so in this video, I'll be showing you how I knitted the back piece of the vest and then how to um, connect the front and the back piece together. Uh, so, um, just before we start, I just wanted to let you know that I did experience um, some difficulty with shaping the neckline. Uh, so, some little holes ended up appearing on just one side and I didn't notice while I was filming this part of the video. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I did um, to make the back. And then at the end of the video, I will discuss some sort of alternative methods for shaping the neckline. Um, and then in the next part, which is where I noticed the holes, I'll show you what I did personally to fix this problem. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that. Um, and hopefully this video can still be useful to you. Okay, let's get started. We start making the back piece in the same way that we made the front. So we cast on 90 stitches, work in two by two rib for 22 rows. Then we change the yarn color and work in stockinette stitch for 42 rows. And then we shape the armholes using the SSK decrease and the knit two together decrease for 16 rows. Okay, so I've done that and now I'm going to knit 38 more rows in stockinette stitch. And on the 38th row, I'm going to set up my stitch markers. I'm going to place one marker on either side of the center six stitches. By the way, before I had stitch markers, I used to use bits of scrap yarn like this. So just before we dive in, I wanted to quickly explain why the center six stitches and also the plan from here. I found the bias bind off method on a Coco Knits blog post. So I'll chuck that in the description below and you can check it out for more details. Uh, so currently we have a total of 74 stitches and I'm going to be binding off 15 stitches from each side using this method. The straps need to be 19 stitches wide to match the front. So that means we need to bind off the six stitches in the center. So we're going to start by knitting across the row until we hit the stitch before the stitch marker. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I'm up to the stitch before the stitch marker. And here I have to do something that's called knit through front and back. Um, which I think it, uh, the acronym for it is NTFB or something like that. I'll look it up. All right, so I knit through the front like I normally would. And then instead of pulling this stitch off, I also want to knit through the back as well. So here, through the back of the loop. Wait, I'll show you that again. So this, without pulling this stitch off, I go through this back bit here and then I knit it again. So I'm basically creating two stitches from this one stitch here. And the reason you do that is because when you want to bind off these six, you basically are binding off using this extra stitch you created. All 
Alrighty, so now I'm gonna bind off these six stitches. So, and then pulling this extra stitch that we made over the top. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to bind these off. So I get rid of this marker and then I have to bind off this one as well. Okay, so that means I've bound off my six stitches and then from here, I'm just gonna knit across the rest of this row. Okay. So there we go. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to purl across the row, um, but we're going to stop here. So we're going to purl until there's one stitch remaining. Okay, so we've got one stitch left and we're going to slip this purl wise like that and then we turn our work around. And then we slip these two stitches purl wise so like this and then we pull this stitch over the top yep and then we're going to bind off two more stitches Okay, yeah, you can already kind of see it's curving up. So we just have to repeat that process four more times. So I did that bias bind off process five times, um, decreasing a total of 15 stitches so now there are 19 stitches including this one here okay so now that that is the right width I'm just going to knit across here per one more row and then bind off
Alrighty, so now to do it on the other side. It's basically the same thing, but we bind off on the pearl row instead. So I'm going to make a loop with my yarn and then I'm going to start by purling across this row. Now I'm going to knit until one stitch remains and then I'm going to slip it purl wise. Then I turn my work around and slip the first two stitches purlwise. I pull the first stitch over the top. Then I bind off two more stitches, but by purling them since I'm on a purl row. So I'm just going to purl across this row and then I'm going to repeat this process four more times until I've decreased 15 stitches and there are 19 stitches remaining. So I just finished my last round and I have 19 stitches left including this one and I'm going to purl across this row, knit across the next and then bind off on the purl row. Uh, so I don't have any footage of me finishing this side and I'm not sure why nor do I have any footage of the completed back piece before I attach the front of the back. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. You can also check out that blog post that I was telling you guys about. Um, and now we're just gonna jump straight into attaching the front and the back. Okay, so now it's time to attach the straps. So place the front and back pieces next to each other with the right sides facing up. And I'm going to show you uh, how to join these with this, with the orange color, just so you can see. Um, but of course afterwards, I'll go through with the, the green. Um, so you just wanna thread your tapestry needle. I have this comically large one. Um, and make sure you have enough for about a, a 10 centimeter tail. So what you wanna do is for both this bottom bit and this top bit, you need to identify the first row or the row closest to the edge, basically. So here we can see it's this 
bit here that's right next to this bind off edge um, and you can see it's made up of these V's so we've got a V there we've got a V there and we have a V there so for the bottom edge you want to identify the first stitch there it is there's that V and you want to insert your tapestry needle from the back into the center of that V. Okay, leaving about a yeah, 10 centimeter tail. So now we can go to this top piece up here and find that first row. Again, looking out for the Vs. So here we go, there's a V there. There's the next V along. And there's the next one along there. So for the top, what we are going to do is we're going to get our tapestry needle and we're going to insert it and go underneath the two legs of the V. Like that. Okay, so now let's look at the bottom bit again. So for the bottom, we're going to insert our needle into the same spot that this that the yarn comes out of. And we're going to take it out in the center of the next V across. So you can see that's there. It's going to come out of the center of that V. So now we're going to go to the top again and we're going to insert our needle here underneath the two legs of the next V across. So the, there's the first V, we go to the next V across and insert our needle underneath both legs of the second V. come back down to the bottom so for the bottom remember we insert the needle into the same spot that the yarn came out of and it exits at the center of the next V across like so the top we're going underneath the two legs and at the bottom we're inserting it in the same spot and coming out the center of the next V across so I'll just do that a few more times and then we'll take a look. Oops. So as you can see, this kind of creates a new row of Vs that joins these two pieces. And as I'll show you later, once I've done it with the green, um, it's 
creates a pretty seamless connection between these two pieces. Alrighty, there we go. So I'm gonna go do that with my green now and then I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I finished sewing those two bits together um, and it looks pretty good there as you can see. You can see slightly where it's stitched together but I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, and I'm just gonna weave in these ends into this back bit here. Um, yeah, so, so that it can't be seen. Okay, so next up we're gonna sew together um, the edges here. Okay, so now we are ready to stitch the sides together. Um, we're gonna do that with a stitch called the mattress stitch and it's super easy. Um, if you want, you can join the bottom bits, the ribbing um, as well. Uh, the way that we cast on means that when you do the mattress stitch, it will just look like another rib. Um, so it will work out really beautifully. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave these bits detached and I'm gonna, I'm gonna join just this green bit. So starting from where the color change starts and going up all the way to um, where the armhole decreasing starts. So if you take a look, you can actually see where that first decreasing stitch is. Um, it's right here. We can see that there are two stitches knit together. So I'm going to join from here to here. Okay, so I'll just bring the camera closer once again. And I've got my tapestry needle and I have threaded it with the orange once again, just so you can see what I'm doing. And um, later I'll undo that and do it with the green, but just so that you can see, I've got this orange here. Okay, so uh, where we're gonna join is we're gonna find, we're gonna find the edge stitch. So that's here. This is the stitch on the very edge. It sort of curls over a little bit, but it's there. So this that stitch there is the second stitch from the edge. And what we want is we wanna find the little horizontal bars that are between the stitches. So you can see there's one there. The horizontal bars like a ladder okay and the other side will also have that so let's see this is the stitch on the edge that's the second stitch from the edge and then between those two stitches are these horizontal bars okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the first green horizontal bar and just put our needle, our tapestry needle underneath that bar. Okay, I'll leave a tail of about 10 centimeters or so. Okay, and then I find that first green horizontal bar on this side and put my needle underneath that bar. Okay, and then now I go to the, that first side and I find the horizontal bar that is directly above that first one 
and I put my needle underneath that bar. Okay, and then go across to this side, find the bar that's above the one we just worked, and I'm gonna thread my yarn through there. Oops. Okay. And that's basically it. We're just gonna work our way up in this manner um, un until we reach that point where um, the armhole decreases start. So I'll do a few more for you and then I'll show you what it looks like when you pull it together because it looks really good. that now look at that that looks lovely okay I'm gonna go through and weave all the ends um, at the end but yeah when we're ready to do that we can just weave it through this bit here Okay, so I'm just gonna go and do the other side now and then all of our joining will be finished. And with this very satisfying motion, all our joining is complete. Okay, so as promised, I have two alternative methods for shaping the neckline. So the first is simply to not shape it at all, to keep knitting until you uh, reach the desired height and then just to bind off. So instead of knitting 38 rows after shaping the armholes and then setting up the stitch markers, just knit 50 rows and then bind off so it's flat at the top. Uh, so the other option is to decrease using the decrease methods that we used for the front of the vest. Uh, so the knit two together decrease and the SSK decrease. So to do that, um, knit up to that 38th row and set up the stitch markers, but set them up on uh, either side of the center 26 stitches, not six. Um, and then you want to knit across and bind off those 26 stitches and then shaping the left side using uh, the SSK decrease, decreasing five times over 10 rows. And then on the other side, shaping it using the knit two together decrease, um, decreasing five stitches over 10 rows uh, again. I hope that diagram makes sense for you. But I, th I think either of these methods would be fine. I haven't tried them myself personally, so I don't know, but my gut feeling is that they would both look pretty good. Um, let me know if you try them and uh, let me know how it goes for you because I'm, I'm genuinely interested. Uh, and in saying all of this, I also just want to say that I don't think this bind off this bias bind off method that I did was actually that bad. Like I think I was maybe overreacting a little bit. Um, because in this point of knitting, like I still hadn't even noticed that there were holes. I didn't even notice till I started picking up the stitches for the ribbing. Uh, so I was, I was also just kind of curious um, because I use the same method for the blue vest. So like in theory, the same holes should be there. And I did go and check it and there are little holes there which I'll put on the screen for you so you can check it out. But yeah, it's, it's not that big a deal. It's not perfect, but I can live with it. But if I could go back in time, I would try and decrease, sorry, I would try and shape using 
the decrease method because I think that would be neater and also easier. Um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, so this concludes part two. I bet you thought that this was going to be a two part series. Uh, so did I, but it turns out it's going to be a three part series. But the next part is actually the last part. So I'll see you there. All right. Bye.